Hey guys, this is War Machine 395 here with a video review, this time of the high grade Universal Sentry Zaku 1 sniper type. Alright, so that's pretty cool. Um, just based on the looks of it, you know, I will probably be putting out a review of the Zaku 1 pretty much the same time as this. So, I'll put that in the link below, but it's pretty much the same kit. More or less, yeah. There's a lot different about it, though, but... So it warrants its own review, but it's very much the same. So, without further ado, I think we'll give this a start. Alright, so here it is, straight out of the box. It looks pretty cool. The belt backpack is kind of bulky, right? You can see that. Um, something we'll be starting with the head. See, the usual side to side. It can't get all the way around because of the backpack. It would be able to otherwise. Now, just because of that antenna. Now, because of the size of the mono eye on this one, you get this massive scope thing that sticks out, right? You cannot move the mono eye anymore. The little switch under there is gone, right? So no mono eye movement, just the head turning a bit, right? So I'm gonna try and keep that command antenna on. Oh whatever. Sit to the side. Oh, stay over there. There we go. Alright. Okay, so the shoulders are more or or less the same here as the Zaku one. So they can go all the way forward if you like, and all the way back. Alright. And this shield part, uh, the shoulder armor, you can swing off to the side, and you can see where it goes all the way up, about 90 degrees away from the torso, and that's about as far as it goes because it's kind of got this cover thing going on. Get a little, little further if you remove that part, but then it doesn't look as good. So that's about it. Uh, it rotates under the shoulder, full 360, no problem. And the elbow gives you about almost 180, really. It can probably touch its own shoulder if you get in the right place. Yes, it can. Alright. So, ball jointed wrists. Um, Alright. And. Alright, so we can go to the waist here. Let's just watch this for a second, if you like. The waist here, for it, you can get all the way around fairly easily. Now, if you have a paint, it would probably scratch the paint up if you're trying that. But it gets that kind of movement there, because so of the waist design. Uh, so there's one plastic part sitting in there with a poly cap up here, and a very, very long peg. So it swivels there, and then this waist section just stays. Unless you get that, right? Now, from there, you can do the side skirts. Those pop out to the sides. Each are independent on a poly cap. Now, here's another different part from the Zaku 1. Each of the front skirts is independent out of the box, so no mods, you gotta do that. Uh, so this part here, the crotch piece, is different from the original Zaku 1. Now the backpack, sorry, gets in the way of this part. Um, right here, where you usually hang the bazooka on the old one. This kit doesn't come with a bazooka, so it really doesn't matter. But you can't get in there to open it. See, it still opens and everything. It's just not usable. Alright, and nothing is articulated on the backpack at all except for the cable, which you can unplug, and hopefully that would stay there. And that just connects to the rifle, of course, like usual. Alright, we'll show that later. Alright, so in the waist is a ball joint. Not going to get much out of it, of course, because that's as far as it's going to get. Right there. Right, just the usual ball joints are kind of limited in that regard. Uh, the knees will bend a little bit better than 90. Before it's cut short by the 
an armor here where it sticks out, right? Now the ankles can move forward that much, quite a ways. Backwards that much, not a lot. And side to side, just it, again, the ankle setup is kind of random on the Zaku series, but pretty cool overall. All right, so that's about it for articulation. Um, I did mention some of the similarities with this kit and the original Zaku one. Um, in terms of hands, you have two open palms on the kit and another open palm. Sorry, that's open fist. The open palm here. That one serves a different kind of purpose, but it's kind of differently shaped, as you can tell. This being the Zaku one open palm that comes on the original. Or it's the same as the one on the original, except you don't get a hand cover for it. It's just not included. So, you know, it's on the right runner, it's just that there's no hand cover for it. So you have this open palm and a trigger finger hand that I have attached to the rifle here. Okay, I always just leave it there. As well as one more accessory, the Zaku 1 machine gun. Alright, so you can use that if you like. But I don't think it looks nearly as awesome as the other gun, right? Awesome. Alright, so we'll show you what that looks like going in. Okay, and pop that hand off. I, like I said, I usually leave the trigger finger hand attached because it looks so much cooler. And unfortunately, I have trouble with this cable staying on. So this basically goes on underneath the arm and around. Let's try and get this in here. The bend is kind of weird. Get that. If There we go. There we go. So you can hold this rifle really well. Alright, and there's one more accessory that it comes with. It's kind of an accessory anyway. It is this section of knee armor. Flops out like this. You can kind of see where this is going, right? So you straighten this ankle, bend up the knee, bend this one forward. A little bit more. And this is where the importance of that separated front skirt armor comes in. So, is that not a badass pose? Look a little cooler with the command antenna, admittedly, but it still looks pretty cool. Alright. Now I think it's time for a comparison with its brother's suit, the Zaku-1. Not so much a size comparison as a just a general comparison of what it looks like. So you can tell right here that they're going to be mostly the same, but there's a lot of differences. Alright, so we'll start with the obvious ones. Alright, the armament. No sniper rifle here. Circle around to the back, and the backpacks are very clearly different. Now, everything about the legs is the same, with the exception of this knee. Alright, so that is actually the entire inner area of this knee is different. Okay, and as I said earlier, the front skirts are different. Separated, as well as the crotch piece here. The chest is different. Alright, so it's a little more detailed on the sniper variant. Okay. That's pretty cool. So it overlaps on both sides. Gives it that little more armored kind of look. Now if you look closely at the head here, right where my thumb is, you might be able to spot head vulcans. So that is not a common thing to the Zaku family. Only, I think the Garmazabi custom has head vulcans on it. Alright, so there's one more thing. One last thing.
Okay, so for the last bit, we're just going to talk about some accessories that come with both. And basically, price point wise, this guy is cheaper. Comes with a little more accessories if you're interested in that. Now, this guy is a little newer, looks way cooler, in my opinion, anyway. So, in terms of accessories, this guy comes with a Zaku 1 machine gun, this piece of hardware here, as well as a bazooka, and it's shield with the spikes on it, a Panzerfaust, Sturmfaust or Panzerfaust, something like that. Anyway, uh, so it comes out Heat Hawk and Heat Lock Holder, all the usual close combat weapons. And whereas the Zaku sniper comes with just the sniper rifle and a Zaku 1 machine gun. So if you're looking for accessories and a lower price point, this guy is the way to go. Whereas this guy kind of has it in looks. Alright, so. There's a difference in the number of hands that come with it too. Can't remember how many come with this. Watch the review if you're interested. And this guy just has four hands total, plus the one without the hand cover. So that's it. I think we could do with one more size comparison here, so we'll move this one back and throw in a Zaku 2 Shars Custom. Alright? So that's it for that this review, and I'll see if you guys can guess what these three have in common. Besides being Zaku's, I guess maybe a more apt question would be, what do you think I'm going to do with them? Alright, and that's it. Thanks for watching, guys.